With the baseline min and max secondary sample set, we can now increase individual types of indirect samples to begin to close in on our final render quality. Okay, let's look at the indirect samples quality section of our HIP file. Uh, in this, we're going to be using the same exact setup that we had before with our noise sampler and Karma render settings. So uh, we're gonna just be kind of going on through this Karma render settings and adjusting the indirect samples quality sliders here. So let's first go to our render gallery here and let's just kick off a render. Now I've turned this on to progressive mode for this, uh, just so we can see it resolve a little bit um, more evenly across the image and we can sort of uh, see what sections we want to look at here before the whole thing resolves. So uh, with this here, we're going to be looking again at the indirect samples quality. Uh, we have diffuse quality, reflection, refraction, volume, and subsurface scattering. So each of these are going to act as multipliers on the number of secondary samples we have. So right now, the maximum that any of these could have is four. But in the case of like, say we wanted to up the diffuse quality, we could set this to be three or four, and that would be a multiplier against this. So if it was three, that would mean we could have 12 diffuse um, samples. If it was four, we could have 16 diffuse samples. So these are just, uh, hopefully just gives you kind of a general idea of what it is that we're gonna be working on here. So we don't wanna be rendering uh, all of the scene every time just to be able to check something like diffuse quality. Um, we want to actually just focus on a little area and be able to use that. So with that in mind, um, the first one we'll take a look at is diffuse. And for this, the AOVs that we can look at our direct diffuse, indirect diffuse, and indirect emission. So let's take a look at those. So in this here, we have direct diffuse. This is pretty not, this is not very noisy. The only thing you'll see in here is a little bit of maybe shadow noise, uh, but that we can actually clean up with some of the lights as well. Uh, the indirect diffuse is rather noisy. There's definitely a bit going on in there. And then if we look at the indirect emission as well, uh, we can see there's quite a bit of noise down here. So let's, uh, let's maybe just look at this area right here. I think we've got some noise from sort of all of these in that section. So let's do that. Let's just take this and let's shift click and we're just gonna look at this area maybe right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now turn it over to the bucket uh, mode for our image mode. And this will just resolve these a little bit quicker for us. So let's now come over to our rendering tab and we're gonna start adjusting this. So here is our first uh, setup here. We'll let this actually resolve first and snapshot it before we move on. Great, let's snapshot that. Let's take this, and now these don't have to be whole numbers, but I, I find it easiest to work that way. Um, so let's go up to two on this and see where that gets us. All right, now before we go any further here, uh, I should rename this snapshot because I didn't. So let's just say diffuse one, maybe something like that. Uh, and now we'll take another snapshot and we'll call this diffuse dash two. So here's one. And here is two. We can see that some of the noise is going away in the shadow areas here. Um, and really that's the main part where we're seeing some of this happen. Uh, let's go to maybe the indirect diffuse and we can take a look at the difference there. Yep, definitely some noise going away. But again, the real importance here is our C, our, our kind of beauty pass. Um, this is where we wanna get these um, you know, as close as we can get visually, because it doesn't really matter if our indirect uh, emission is a little bit noisy here. When we look at C, if we're not really seeing any noise over here, it doesn't really matter. So I think that's the main thing just to keep in mind. Now, I do think there's a little bit more noise we can reduce out of here. Remember at the end, we're gonna add a denoiser. So there's so we just wanna get the majority of the noise out of here. So I'm gonna go up one more sample and we'll take a look at this. So I'm gonna change this to three and we'll take a look at what this looks like. All right, let's snapshot this. We'll just say diffuse three, and there we go. So now we've got our third pass of that. We can see that we're we're clearing it up even a little bit more. It's going to be hard for you to see in this in the video, I'm sure, but I'm pretty happy with where this is at. It really feels like we've kind of cleaned up quite a bit from here. Um, our direct is obviously quite smooth, and that's fine. Um, we can actually clean up a little bit of this shadow noise with uh, some light samples, and we can talk about that a little bit more um, in a later video. Okay, so we focused on our diffuse samples here. Let's get rid of these. We're good with those now. We've got our diffuse samples set at three. We'll go back to our live render here. And now let's look at reflection. And if we're looking at this scene, where would we want to kind of uh, take a look at these reflections? Now you could look here, there's a bit there, uh, but I think this green box over here, this green kind of prism thing is going to really be what's best for us. So I'm going to kind of uh, exclude this volume because we don't really need that. 
and we'll let this resolve up here and we'll take a look at what exactly uh, this looks like for us. So now for the reflection, we have our direct glossy reflection, which is pretty smooth looking here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here just to uh, see this a little bit better. There we go. And we also have our indirect glossy. And now you can see quite a bit of noise here in our indirect glossy. So with that in mind, uh, let's go back to C. There we go. That's what it's looking like. So really the indirect is pushing most of the noise on here. So that's the one we can mainly focus on. So let's up the reflection quality a little bit here and see where that gets us. So let's go, uh, let's snapshot this again. We'll say reflection one. And now let's set this to B. All right, so we have this new render here. Let's snapshot that, say reflection two. And let's take a look at the difference here. And I can, I'm starting to feel like even, you know, this is a bit noisy still, um, but I think this reflection is gonna be something that cleans up really well uh, with our denoiser. Uh, and so we're getting pretty smooth here. It's a metal, so it's got a little bit of noise kind of inherent in it. Um, and I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm happy with that for our reflection, for that being the quality of two. Uh, let's now take a look at our refraction next. So let's zoom back out here to see where we could find refraction. And that noise is gonna really just be over here. So I'm gonna home this and zoom in again. We can see that there's some noise here in our refraction channel. So let's uh, shift click over here and just highlight this and we'll get a quick little render of this section. Now that took a little bit longer maybe than I was expecting, but mainly the reason is that we're, we're gonna be compounding these some of these effects on top of each other because there are reflections in this as well. So we have now more time that we need to spend on the reflections on this little, this little tube. Uh, and also now we're gonna be looking at the refraction. So let's get rid of the reflection section there. And uh, let's snapshot this and just say refraction one. Great, so we've got our refraction. And of course, this is really only gonna be seen in our glossy transmission. So if we go here to our glossy transmission, it's basically what we're seeing in our uh, render here. There's gonna be some reflections on top of this, but mainly it's the refraction that we're gonna be seeing in this glossy transmission. So let's go back to our C here. Uh, we've got this set to one. Let's now set this to two and see where that gets us. Okay, so that's resolved. Let's snapshot it and just say refraction two. We can take a look at the difference between these two. And here I'm seeing the noise is pretty much going away. There's maybe just a really tiny bit there. It almost just looks like film grain at that point. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. That just cleans it up just ever so slightly um, and gives us a nice, a nice result. So I'm happy with that as well, refraction being at two. So that should be all set. The next one, let's look for our volume quality. So obviously in this scene, our volume is gonna be right here. So uh, I'm gonna get rid of these two fractions and we're gonna come over here and shift click and just use this little section here. I'm gonna home it and zoom in one. And once this resolves, we'll take a snapshot of it at one. So if you remember from our AOV section when we were looking at some of the different um, optimization AOVs, you'll remember that this volume actually took a really long time to resolve or it took the most CPU time. So this part is gonna be probably the slowest for us to work on other than maybe the subsurface when we start really cranking things up there. But for right now, um, this is what we've got for just one on our volume sample. And I'm gonna go in here and take a look at our uh, direct and indirect volume. That's what's gonna be controlled here. Now the direct volume looks pretty clean, uh, which is surprising usually direct samples are pretty easy to resolve especially with 81 primary samples let's look at the indirect volume it's a little noisy it's mainly noisy down here it seems like uh, a little bit up here as well so let's turn that up one let's uh let's go back to our c let's snapshot this and just say volume one and let's now up this to two and we'll go from there all right, so we have our two uh, passes of uh, volume quality or two uh, in the multiplier here. And let's snapshot that and we'll just say volume two. There we go. So now we have one and two. And that's really feeling pretty clean to me. I mean, there's still a little bit of noise down here and there certainly is a little bit uh, in the shadows as well, uh, but that's not going to be controlled here. And of course, we're not even um, improving that because that's outside of our render region. If we look here, that's outside of it. Um, 
but it's mainly getting resolved. And if we look at our indirect volume, I'm pretty happy with that. That seems like it's quite a bit cleaner. Uh, and so perfect isn't the idea here. We're just trying to get it to be a really good representation of what we can then pass through our a quick denoise at the end. So this is gonna be a really nice quality, I think, that we can then pass in there and get a really good final render out of it. So the last thing that we're gonna take a look at here is the subsurface scattering. So obviously there's one object in here with subsurface scattering. So let's get rid of our volume renders here. So let's go back here and shift click around this. We'll let that start rendering. All right, so this is obviously quite noisy. Um, we can just turn on our subsurface scattering uh, pass just to ignore the rest of everything. Uh, so we can just kind of focus on what we're looking at here. We don't have to really worry about the other parts of the scene. So with this pass, um, I think we really need to go a little bit more than just two on this. Uh, so let's actually start with three and just to get a sense of kind of where, um, where that might ha put us and if we need to go even further than that. So let's up this. Oh, actually before we do that, let's snapshot this. So one, and let's go to three. All right, there is our quality of three render. So let's just do that. We'll just do SSS dash three. And let's take a look between these two. So here's one and there is three. Now we're quite a bit cleaner here, but I do still think there's quite a bit of noise in here or at least enough to warrant at least another level. So let's take a look at this. So where's one, there's three. And yeah, I think we could probably try for four. So let's go back to our live render and bump this up to four and we'll take a look at what this one looks like. All right, so there is our quality of four on the subsurface. Let's snapshot that as well. Subsurface scattering of four, here's three and there's four. And really it looks like we're getting I mean, there's definitely still some noise in there, but it's certainly going to be a little bit of diminishing returns here when you look at it compared to this one versus four. So I think we're at a good spot with this one. Honestly, um, it's at a spot where it looks like we're just have some grain kind of on there. It doesn't really feel like the noise that we were looking at and the denoiser should be able to clean that up really nicely. So before we move on uh, from this chapter, let's just kind of step back and take a look at our whole, our render as a whole and just compare it to maybe where we started from here. So let's go here and I am going to actually shift click off of this. Sorry, shift click off of this and home this. And we'll take a look at what our render looks like before we move on from these CPU based uh, noise sections. All right, so there is our final render quality that we have right now. Let's take a look at this here. We can see that we've got most of the noise away. There's maybe a little bit back here and you know, there's there's some in little bits and pieces around, uh, but for the most part, it's pretty cleaned up and that's exactly what we want before we send it off to something like a denoiser. Uh, just for an example, let's uh, let's just set this back up uh, to its basic quality before we did all the indirect samples and just take a look at the AB of that. So I'm gonna snapshot this and just call this final quality. And uh, yeah, let's set these all back to default and see what that looks like just to compare. All right, so now we have our, we'll just call this start quality. So here's our starting quality that we had, and here's our final quality. It's a minor difference for sure, but we're just gonna go through and we're making sure that all of these kind of last little bits of uh, quality are adjusted so that we're ready to put this into a denoiser and get our final uh, rendered result out of it. Now that we've gone through all of these stages of cleaning up a CPU render, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about how to reduce noise on specific primitives in our scene.